I assume y'all have mixed dye and print paste before. You may have your own way of doing it. If you do it a little differently than the way I do, absolutely no problem. We'll start with the chemical water. With that, I add urea and metaphos. The urea does two things. It helps keep the fabric damp. It, it draws in the moisture from the air. So it helps keep the fabric damp so that we can batch. It also helps dissolve dye when we're mixing the dye. The metaphos is, is water softener. If you live in a place with hard water, you may decide to use a little more. If you already have very soft water or a house water softener, you could live without this. If you live in Arizona, you may need more urea. If you live in Mississippi like I do, you need just a little bit. So it's all negotiable. So I've already mixed this, but what I do is I put one cup of urea and around four teaspoons of metaphos in here, enough hot water to dissolve because the urea does not like to dissolve in cold. So I dissolve in hot, then fill it up with cool and it's done. I like doing this in a blender. It's a whole lot easier. So the chemical water goes in the blender. We're gonna mix up a quart. I left the hole in the top. That way I can put I can put this sodium alginate in there. So when I mixed some up last night, I did my normal recipe of three tablespoons of sodium alginate for a quart of chemical water. It was too runny, so I changed it to about four and a half tablespoons to a quart. It'll pay to experiment. Don't mix the whole batch first. If, if you do mix the whole batch first and it's too thick, you can add chemical water and thin it. If it's too thin, make another thick batch and add it and do it that way. So we turn, I turn it on low. I only run the blender long enough to get this dissolved. I don't just keep running it. Okay, here we go. Okay, now you'll see how runny it is. It just pours out. Very, very thin and drippy. After about an hour, it'll be nice and thick and just perfect. But I want to show you the difference between too thick and too thin. This one is too thin. This one is obviously too thick. If you want to thin this one out, you could add chemical water. If you want to make this thicker, add some of the thick to it. This is close. I would not print with this but I might use it when mixing up my dyes, especially if I'm kind of heavy-handed with the chemical water when dissolving the dye. This is the consistency I like, almost kind of like a honey. I usually start my classes by all of us mixing the dye and the print paste. We've made the print paste. I feel like I need to show you the dye also, if you have your own way of mixing, once again, do it your way. You know, my way is not the only one. At, in my studio, I have a nice deep sink, so I wear a mask and mix in my sink. If you do not have that, a box, a little bit larger than this one, is a great alternative. You want to spray it down with water really, really well. That reduces the static electri electricity and keeps the dye from getting too excited. You can't see me mixing a box, so we're going to do away with that. You can't hear me if I wear the mask, so pretend I'm wearing my mask, as we're all wearing them now anyway. So I'm going to mix a half a cup of bronze. 
for a half a cup, I use a tablespoon of dye. Spoon now immediately goes in some water so I don't have a lot of powdered dye hanging around. Then I use about two teaspoons of chemical water to dissolve the dye. I'm pretty careful to not use too much chemical water. If I do, it'll thin out the print paste when we add that to the dye. So I stir, stir, stir till everything is dissolved. Okay, it's easier for me if I don't add the entire half a cup at one time of print paste. This allows me to easily stir from the bottom of the container and get all of the dye mixed in and then add the rest of the print paste. Okay, we'll continue to stir. Some people start with the print paste and add the dye to that. That's perfectly okay. One of the things I learned from Ree Nancaro from Alaska was to cut a little slit in the lid of my container that way I can keep the lid on it and keep a spoon or spatula in there and my dye doesn't dry out so once again if you have different ways of doing this absolutely no problem if you have any questions give me a call and we will be ready for our class pretty soon. See you then.